Hello and welcome to episode 109, I think, of the Mouses Make Knitting Podcast. My name is Mandy, sometimes known as Mouse. Often in this little basket next to me you will find my co-host Miss Poppy, but I don't actually know where she is today. It's very, very warm. It's about 28, 29 degrees and I suspect she's outside under a bush where it's cool and yeah being far more sensible than the rest of us I may look a little windswept well, there's no may about it I do look a little windswept I've been out in the car this morning and because it was so hot we had all the windows open this is going to be a podcast kind of of two halves so I'm going to do the knitting content first and then that's Dave come and say hello today is our wedding anniversary hello everyone <laughs> um yeah I'm going to do the knitting content first and then I will talk about the southern wool show and show you all the stuff that I've got a lot of it was gifts I've also done some purchasing of my own so we'll deal with all that after the knitting content in case you don't want to see that I know it, it upsets some people so knitting first I have nothing finished that's a lie that's an absolute lie I have two things finished this is what happens when you try to fly by the seat of your pants and not look at your notes I finished two pairs of socks I finished this pair. These are, thank you. I'm in a bit of trouble. I'll tell you about that later. These, oh, what is the pattern? Let's Stay Home by Nancy Wheeler. And the yarn is Starcraft Head Over Heels. I'm just going to get my notes. I write the notes and then I ignore them. What is the point? Right, yes. Head over heels, show your pride. Stuart Hillard colourway in BU. As in be yourself, not letter B. Letter U. I finished these. I'm hoping you can see well because the blind is sort of semi shut because the, the, the sun. But I did what I wanted to do. I put a turquoise heel in one, purple in the other, and then the opposite colour in the toe. What I had to do, though, because I wanted it to be in the stripe of the same colour, I used a different yarn. Uh, this one is West Yorkshire Spinners. I knew all this before I started. It's a West Yorkshire Spinners and it's purple. This one is Drops Fable and it is not purple. This I think is 115. I could be wrong. Ignore everything I'm saying. So this was the first one I did and it just worked out that the leg was the right length for me to split the purple stripe and put in a German short row heel with a different yarn but it matched almost perfectly but to do the second sock I knew that I was going to end up in the purple stripe again so what I did was I offset it one stripe so I started one stripe earlier with the second sock so that I would get to put the heel in one stripe earlier which was the blue this one obviously does not match quite as well. Afterwards I realised they did have some that was the exact same colour but it was too late and I wasn't going to pull them out. I quite like it as it is. So yeah, that's one finished pair. Then if I can reach them without causing an avalanche, maybe not, hang on a sec, I have returned. I've also finished these socks. See, when I said I had nothing finished, I was an absolute liar. 
This pattern is Rhinebeck Roomies by Crazy Sock Lady. The main yarn is Woolcraft. And the heels, no, the toes and cuffs are Drops Fable. I do not have the colourways written down and I've put all my ends away because I had a massive tidy up and I did not think about how that was going to affect my recording today. Never mind. I've cast some new things on. Oh, I should tell you about this first of all. This is the Streamline Tank by... I want to say Jessie made, but it may not be. I did not knit this. Denise from Dear Designs knit this um, and it no longer fits her. So she asked me if I would like it. And as I'd abandoned mine and pulled it down, I said, oh yes, please. So I might have another go. I've worn this today. As I say, it is very hot, very hot. And I've been pretty comfortable all day. So I might knit another one. Or I might actually knit one, since I never finished the first one. Shut up, Mandy. Right. I've cast some new things on. I cast on a hat. Traditionally, if you've been here a while, you'll know this, but traditionally, every year, my brother gets a hat, either for his birthday or for Christmas. And this year, it seems to me to be particularly important because he's walking to work. He's walking six miles there and six miles back. And so when it's cold, his poor baldy head is going to be freezing. So I've cast him on a new hat for this year. And what I did was, it's a Musselboro by Zolder Teague. What I did was make sure I'd done all the increases because I wanted it for car knitting. So I got it to there. And then I did all of that knitting in the car on the way to and from the Southern Wool Show. The yarn's coming out really nicely. I wasn't sure it was going to do this, but can you see it's quite a subtle pattern, but there is a pattern on it. I wanted to make him a patterned hat. He gets a plain hat every year, but I didn't want to go wild because I thought he won't wear it. He's very conservative with what he wears. So I fished this out of stash. It is opal sock yarn in the rascals and the colourway is the checker and it even has a picture of him on the label look I know I'm I'm mean um yes so that was the first cast on it really is just going to be for car knitting Dave, I can't remember if I said this or not, Dave has the week off work this week and we don't go away on holiday, it's too complicated and, oh, something I must tell you, um, I've got my cardiology appointment on Thursday, it was going to be next March, that was the earliest date, so I booked that and then they rang me last week and said can you come next Thursday, so yeah we're doing that, so this week is kind of our annual holiday and we tend to, if I'm well enough, go out places and what have you. So we, we started it off with a bang with the Southern Wool Show. Today we popped into Yeovil. There were some things we had to do, including, this is crossing over. I'm sorry about this. But if I don't tell you things when I remember them, they're gone. You know this. Yeah, we had to go back to Shop Mobility, where I've, I've hired the, the mobility scooter from. Because yesterday, about... Oh, I don't know, half an hour into using it, the key snapped off in the in the ignition. So I thought it was going to be a disaster, but it wasn't because in the it's a funny little sort of dome shaped key top and inside it there's a little bit of key left. So that will fit into the slot and turn it. I thought it was all going to be a disaster, but it wasn't. It was OK. But we had to go back. They've given us a spare key. But the broken key is still in the lock. So Dave's got to try and get that out before we go anywhere else. Right, I had finished all my socks. I had eight pairs, eight pairs of socks on the needle at the beginning of August. They're all gone. All off the needles. And 
I won the year of the sock for August. I'll show you my prize in a bit. So I've cast on a new pair. I actually cast on two pairs, but I've just pulled one down because it's not going to be big enough to go around my fat ankles now. This pattern is Scattering Petals by Dana Ray Makes. And you might remember I knit the DK version with my DK yarn. I don't know how well that's coming out. This is a scrappy pair. Most of the yarns I'm using are Ducky Darlings from two of her Misfit Minis sets. So this one, the cuff, that's one of my own hand dyed that I dyed up when I did the Vertices Unite. The green row stripe, second one down, that is Diane from U Tree Yarn Craft. She had something I ordered she likes to put in like a little mini um, and it was just beautiful but she it didn't have a name she'd just been playing if it had a name I would probably order a sweaters quantity but I seem to be doing all, all right so let's not worry about that so all the others and these four are all ducky darlings this one I can tell you is brew the others were from the misfit minis so i don't know and i've got one left still to go in which is this one and this is lamb lotto lamb lotto and brew i got for christmas a couple of years back and i made an exordium shawl with them so there was only a tiny bit left but perfect for making some scrappy socks and to make sure that I don't make a mistake, I'm making them at the same time. So I literally do a stripe on one, cut the yarn, do the stripe on the other one, so that I can't get myself into a pickle, in theory. As we know, my ability to get myself into a pickle is quite phenomenal. So I'll probably still manage it at some point. Then I cast on the next shawl in my Stephen West Marathon. It's the last one to do, apart from the MCAL. My star flanket, I'm maybe a quarter of the way through, but I haven't picked it up for a while and I'm unlikely to pick it up this week. Oh, I see Poppy. Yep, she's just taking herself into the shade. Um because it's so hot and I know a lot of people have been waiting for summer to come back but this time last week it was 17 degrees and this week it's 27 and I am literally melting hot weather is not good for me at all bear that in mind when I tell you why I was in trouble at the weekend so I've cast on I'm gonna try and stay on track but I'm still a little bit overexcited from yesterday, so I've cast on another Slumber Shawl by Stephen West. I say another. Actually, I'm just going to show you the one I knit before. I say another because I've knit it before. This is the first one that I knit. I can't remember if it was January, February 20 or 21. But I loved it so much. I think it was 20. Because it was just before Brexit happened. And Hobie, of course, is in Europe. And I was afraid we wouldn't be able to get it anymore. Because nobody quite knew what was going on with customs and stuff. So I bought... Um, it's Hobie Winter Glow. This is the purple. I bought three more balls. Cakes. Cakes. They're 250 gram cakes. But there's 700 metres. And there was plenty to do the short and have some left over. And I've used this so much. It's really light and drapey. It's an Aran weight yarn, but it's almost like hand spun. So it can be a little bit uneven. But I really, really loved it. And the colours are just stunning. So 
that's the one I knit before. This is the one I've cast on. Oh, Mandy, it's black. Well, yes, it is. So isn't it lucky we've got some good light? I think I will get a ton of use out of this because I wear a lot of black. Black goes with everything. So I really should have cast this on before, but it knits up really quickly. For Stephen West, it is a pretty simple pattern. You just have to keep an eye on what row you're on, whether you should be doing a garter ridge and I should really take note of this myself, whether you should be putting in your eyelet rows. Can anybody see what's going on here? My feeling is no one's going to see that while it's all scrunched up round my neck. And if they do see it, they can mind their own business. I tried to fix it. I'm not pulling it back. Because of the type, it's 51% um, wool, 49% acrylic. But it's quite hairy wool. Once it's washed and blocked, it's really soft. But, and I know you can put it in the freezer. That's not my issue. I'm just not pulling it back. And that's an end to it. So, Slumber Shawl in black from Hobie. What is the colourway? It's Winter Glow and it is colour number 16. They do this, which is kind of variegated, and they also do Winter Glow as a solid now, but I think that's only in 100 grams. So I don't know how well you can see the variegation. Can you see it at all? It's too bright behind it, I think. Or maybe there. So it's very subtle. But there's kind of a pink, grey, a blue, which could be purple. It's that sort of purpley blue. Um... This sort of a brownie gold colour. It's there. It's going to have an awful lot of use when it's finished. And I still have two more cakes to do. And I will probably make the same shawl because it's the perfect size. And as I say, I've used the other one a lot. I will show you the others as and when I come to use them. So, pardon me. There's one more thing that I've cast on. And if you watch Denise from Dear Designs, you may guess what it is. We decided between our friends group that we were going to cast on another eyelet burst. I don't know what possessed us. So, you may not remember my first eyelet burst. It was only a couple of months ago. But it is bright, shocking pink, fading through turquoise into a beautiful kind of greeny jade. This one is a little more pedestrian I'm going to say but probably more practical. Where's the pattern? There's the pattern. Right so this is the Islet Burst Jewel. It is ginormous but because it's ginormous and because of its shape it makes it really nice for putting around your shoulders. It just fits and then you've got straight, almost like a cardigan or a capelet. So I've got a little, um, I can't remember what they're called, but they've got, oh. can I just say, all my friends are going to be saying I-cord. This is our sign for I-cord. It's not an I-cord. They're like little crocodile clips and you clip things. Is it a cardigan clip? I don't know. But I think you probably know what I mean. So you could wear it like a little capelet and use the cardigan clip and it won't fall off. Or you can wear it like a shawl normally, wrap it round you and fling it over. Or like a scarf if you don't mind being kind of like this in it. It's big. So 
I sorted out some, as I say, more pedestrian yarns and I have come up with, if I can untangle it, this is my first one. What is going on? Then? This is number one. So I'm hoping you can see that. It's kind of browns, golden brown, grey and black. This was one of my attempts at making poppy coloured yarn. It came out looking quite good for Poppy's tail, although there's not that much white in her tail. Um, her tail looks like it was put together with all the bits left over when they'd finished making all the other cats. So cute. She's what Americans call a, a calico cat. But her tail is what we all call tortoise shell. We call calico cats tortoise shells as well. Are you following this? I might have to stop for some water in a minute. Anyway, this is this is my first colour, and it's going to get progressively darker as it goes down. The one after this is more brown and black. I wonder if I can reach it. Hang on, if I'm going to pause anyway I might as well, mightn't I? Right, this is the next one. So this is lots more brown, golden brown and grey and then the following one is brown and black and then finally black. So that's the eyelet burst. Right, that's all the knitting I've done. I'm going to have a water break and then I'm going to talk to you about the show. So if you don't want to hear about that, that's fine. And I'll probably see you. I might see you next week. I might not see you for a couple of weeks. It just depends how much I get done because obviously we're having days out. I've got a whole day at the hospital. Knitting time might be limited. Right. I'm going to pause now and if you are not staying to talk about the show that's fine I'll see you when I see you thanks for coming if you're waiting to hear about the show give me a second right then southern wool show my first ever yarn show oh, I had such a fabulous time I'll tell you now why I was in trouble the southern wool show it's quite a long drive from here. It took us about two and a half hours to get there. And because I have to drink a lot, because I have kidney failure, and at the moment I'm managing it with diet and fluid and stuff, so I'm trying to avoid dialysis. Generally, I drink a lot. I'm supposed to drink between two and three litres a day. I have had to knock that down a little bit because of the heart failure, where they want you to drink less. So I'm trying to I'm trying to balance it. But then on Saturday, because I didn't want to have to stop three times on the way there to find a public toilet, I did not drink very much at all. And Dave found out and then Dave dobbed me in like the telltale tip he is to my friend Sarah, who was at the yarn show, and who is a nurse, and who proceeded to tell me off. So I'm now trying to catch up on the fluid that I didn't drink on Saturday. Tried to catch up on Sunday, but it was so hot and I was just very glowy. And I'm still very glowy today. So I've probably got to drink like five litres of water for the next week and a half to try and catch up with myself. But yes, that's why I keep pausing for a mouthful of water. Before I even went to the Southern Wall show, I bought myself a present because I was poorly. And from Diane at Utree Craft, I bought this stunningly beautiful wool. This is Phoenix. I believe she still has some in stock. It is just gorgeous. I don't know if the camera's picking up all the different shades of orange in there. Beautiful. I also bought 
of this bag which has very quickly become my very favourite bag ever and I've been desperate to use it but wanted to keep it all nice and ready for you to see. It comes with this strap which is supposed to clip on there but because I don't like the feel of zips I know I'm weird. I've never claimed to be otherwise. Oh she's coming, hello. Wait, wait Pops, there's... come on. There you are, back on duty. Oh, small avalanche. Yeah, because I don't like the feel of zips, I clip it onto the zip pull and then I use this to clip stitch markers onto. It's got two big pockets in the front. Oh, and it smells divine. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how Diane gets them to smell so nice. Really weird. I mean, I'm really weird for smelling bags, not Diane is really weird. So I bought that, but Diane did send me, as a gift, because she is lovely, this beautiful, beautiful yarn, which is called Clueless. Ha! It's very apt. Um, and it is extra fine superwash merino, 75%, 25% mulberry silk. And I wish this was like touch -a vision because this is the softest thing I have possibly ever felt, apart from Poppy. Let, let me do a comparison. It's close. Put in a pair. That's very nice. So I think I'm going to make a neck garment of some description with this. It's, it's far too soft to waste on socks. So thank you very much, Diane. It's very much appreciated. And the colour is absolutely beautiful. The gifts do not end there. I have the best friends and family ever. Karen from the Recreational Knitting Podcast colluded with Denise and sent me this gift. Now, I did look for it, but I was getting really hot. I got a very similar gift from my friend Lorraine, Lorraine from the future. And the two of them, because they were both died by Denise, and I suspect on the same day, go together very, very well. So I'm going to make a Mina shawl. I want to say it's by Surrey Nordland. But you need two skeins and one is sort of the main body of the skein and so I'm going to use the grey and turquoise for that and then for the kind of edging I'm going to use this one. So that was that was fortuitous shall we say. I'm building a pile here. Then as I mentioned earlier I won the year of the sock for August and so I got this prize which is very beautiful and not unlike something that I, I went on to buy. Um, this is called Zombies so may well end up being a pair of Halloween socks. Um, it does have the orange that I am currently loving at the moment. I don't know what it is Suddenly, orange and golden yellows are my favourite colours at the moment. I don't know why. Right. Now, everything from now on is wool show related. First of all, I'm going to put in some pictures. I met up with my normal Zoomy friends. Normal is a stretch, but you know what I mean. Um, Sarah. Denise from Dear Designs. Sarah has the Fibre Sanctuary podcast. She has made one episode. She refuses to make any more. Um, Denise from Dear Designs. Sally, um, who also used to have uh, a wool podcast back in South Africa, but now she's moved to England, doesn't have the time, I don't think. And very luckily managed to meet up with the Wool and Wishes girls, Kirsty and Tracy, and they had presents for me. 
I took presents for all my friends, including them, and they had presents for me. So Tracy has given me a Wool and Wishes button, which I'm very excited about. And Kirsty gave me this, her own hand spun. This is my very first ever skein of hand spun yarn. And I mean, just look at the colours, all oh, the greens. The greens are just so me. I think it's going to be a Harlow hat. That's as far as I've got with planning for it. I was a little bit overwhelmed yesterday. Um, when we first got there, we got there I suppose about half ten. It was packed, absolutely packed. There were a lot of people. It was very warm. I was on the mobility scooter, so I was kind of lower than everybody else, which made it even more overwhelming. And there were just lots of people and it was all a little bit much to begin with. Um, plus I'd got myself very overexcited. But I came away with many gifts and many things that I've bought. So I should just tell you about that. My first stop was Ducky Darlings and I'll show you what I, what I thought, okay, rewind. Peter and Lauren, Ewan and Dave all gave me some early birthday money so that I could spend it at the wool show. I also had some very generous donations um, on Kofi for use at the wool show. So yes. I buy myself presents with it. From Ducky Darlings, I bought, and these are from, from Peter and Lauren, a set of green minis. Because green. And a mystery bag. And inside the mystery bag was this beautiful blue, which has got quite a green streak running through it this is in too deep and very aptly bearing in mind this was an early birthday present this skein which is called it's my party and i'll cry if i want to so i bought those from peter and lauren ewan bought me oh, this bag It's an Emma Ball bag, as I'm sure you will have guessed, and it is a, a nice big shawl stroke sweater size. That was from Ewan. He and Dave, between them, bought me this skein of yarn, and I can't actually tell you what shop this was from, because it doesn't say. It just says Superwash Nylon and... no, it doesn't say that at all. It says 25% nylon and 75% superwash wool. But it is beautiful purples and browns. And again, would make rather a nice pair of socks. Dave also bought me oh, this enormous bag, which has got a button closure. And I mean, that's blanket, blanket territory, that one, isn't it? which is handy because I have seen a blanket that I would like to start and of all people crazy sock lady is egging me on to do it Kay Litton I commented on her podcast because she showed it to me I get very sweaty and I feel like my eyelashes are sticking underneath my eyes um she was the second person in 12 hours to show it to me and I said I just think that's a sign I should cast it on and she just went do it so Crazy sock lady tells you you've got to do something. You've got to do it, haven't you? It's like the queen giving a, a command. And then I'd seen this bag earlier, but I couldn't bring myself to buy it because I did say I wasn't buying any project bags. I told Denise, do not let me buy any project bags. And then I bought two. So I wasn't going to break my vow so badly that I bought three but my friend Sally bought me this one wait for it a 
How perfect is that? And these two are from a shop called Sewing Bee by D. And on the back of her little label it says, Be Busy Bees. So of course I must do that, she told me. I always do as I'm told. <laughs> I also had the great pleasure of running to, into a couple, of, not literally on my mobility scooter, of meeting, let's, let's say that, of meeting a couple of people who watch the podcast. So, Spin Bobbin, hello. Thank you for saying hello. And thank you for approaching me slowly and cautiously so as not to startle me. And the other lady's name, I think, was Bev. But I may be getting you confused. I was very tired and very overexcited. Um, I know you're purple something, but it was very, very nice to meet you too. You said something that embarrassed me greatly, but was very nice and very lovely. I'm not going to tell you what she said, because that would be even more embarrassing. But thank you. I have learned to take a compliment in my old age. Right, now... I'm going to show you the vast pile of stuff that I bought myself. As I said, I had some very generous donations and I had saved up my pennies because this is the only wool show I will be going to this year. And I think perhaps I must not ever buy another skein of yarn for the rest of this year. We know how well that's going to go, don't we? Um, but anyway. After... Ducky Darlings was the first stall I went to. After I'd been round all the ones in that building, we'd had lunch, we'd been round all the ones in the other building. I'd been back to the other building because in the smaller, I can't remember what it was called, the smaller bit was all wool that ends wool. And I had seen some beautiful yarn there, but when I looked it was DK and what I wanted was four ply. So... Instead of getting that one, I got this one. This is called Moorland Morning. And it is just gorgeous. It goes from a teal and this kind of wine burgundy colour through oranges and greens and golden yellows and yellow. That's just so stunning. And I have a feeling this might end up in a sweater possibly with black so after lunch I bought that we went back into the main building and this is all out of order now but the last place I went to was back to Ducky Darlings and I bought this and I've just undone the end of the skein by accident this is called a petals rainbow now she had Lots of petal rainbow, which was much paler than this. Had she had more of these, I would have bought more of these, but this was the only one. It's a much darker rainbow, and it's just stunning. I have a plan for this with some undyed yarn to make a tea. It's a free pattern. Hang on, I'm trying to get it out from under the pile of stuff. Uh, it's a free pattern that Denise brought to my attention the other morning. And you can't see because I've printed it in black and white because I've run the, I've run the printer out of coloured ink. Um, it's by Millie's Knit Design and it is different colours in the wider stripes. But I was thinking what I might do is do... Do something with undyed. Maybe do the narrower in this colour and have some left over for something else. I don't know. I've got to work out metre ridges and things. Also for that jumper, I bought these. I've got two of this colour and one of this colour. And these are from Dina's Home of Crafts. The DK, uh, this is Harvest and this is Vapour. And I bought those specifically to go with this, which the lovely Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit sent me 
it is where are we hedgerow yarns it doesn't seem to have a color way way i'm very hot but i wanted some some colors that would go with it and i don't know if you can see but in these two that color is echoed and what I want to do is use these two for the broader stripes and this for the narrower stripes and make that sweater. Then I'd been to Blue Fern Yarns after Ducky Darlings. I'd been to Blue Fern Yarns and it was absolutely packed. And the only downside of using the mobility scooter meant that I couldn't really see into stalls because my head was lower and if there were a lot of people in the way I couldn't see anything at all I missed one of the particular stalls I wanted to go to was James Makes Yarn and I missed it completely there must have been people in front of it and I just couldn't find it I didn't think to look in the program at the floor plan because David printed me out the floor pan fluffla one of those but we think it might have been from the year before because it didn't have James Makes Things on there or the Lace Knittery and they were both there. But it did have Had Siobhan's Crafts on there, which I was really looking forward to seeing. No, I lie. Snuggly Stars Yarns. Snuggly Stars Yarns I really wanted to go to and that was not on there. So I think it might have been from a previous year. But anyway. When everybody had cleared out and we came back round for the second time, I went to Blue Fern Yarns and I succumbed to this. This is just simply called Sky. And it is a beautiful sky blue colour with neps in. And I don't know what it's going to be. It won't be socks, I know that. But I don't know quite what it's going to be yet. I just fell for the colour. It's just too pretty. Then the last thing I bought, there's something in between, but the last thing I bought was this. This was in a bargain bucket from Bellica Yarns. It's DK, which I hadn't noticed when I saw it. I just saw the colours and, I mean, look. I just saw the colours and was like, oh, it's in the bargain bucket, get that. So this will probably be some more Halloween socks. Um, maybe striped with black, I don't know. I could probably get a couple of pairs out of it that way. And I also bought, this was news to some of our party, but I'd bought some of this before. Knit Pro Symphony now do hand dyed yarn and in actual fact I'm going to be using a skein in my new Islet Burst shawl. The black and brown is dark chocolate from Knit Pro Symphony but the last stall I went to um, what I'd done was I went past Bellica Yarns on my way to it and I sent Dave in to get this while I went and got these because people were starting to get ready to close up um, she was selling them considerably cheaper than I had paid for the two skeins that I bought previously so I bought this colour which is a lovely sort of plummy pink and this is called oh pink mauve <laughs> that's on the floor mauve is one of those colours that Everybody has a different idea of what it looks like, I think. To my mother-in-law, it was, you know, a pale purple. I haven't got anything anything to show you to describe what I mean. To me, that's like a raspberry. I wouldn't have said that was mauve. But anyway, I bought that one. And this one. Oh, she's now got Poppy's hairs on it. And this, if you can make out, has got these gorgeous autumnal browns and oranges. But also, it's kind of peacock blue and berry colours. But it's just stunning. 
and this one is party lights and finally I picked this one up which is riverbank and this is all blues and greens and when I bought the dark chocolate from the sock yarn shop I also bought a skein of emerald green I'm looking at it up there this will go very nicely with that I kind of thought that these two might go together and possibly maybe no so I think it's probably going to be these two together and this and the emerald green together and that's everything I shopped till I dropped quite literally I did get out of the mobility scooter a couple of times when I wanted to get into uh, stalls and I just couldn't get in I you know I wouldn't have taken the scooter in anyway because you know it gets in people's way and I might have got trapped and I'm very funny about getting trapped um, so I did get up a couple of times and have a bit of a wander um, and then both times I needed to sit down very very quickly because it was very hot and my heart rate shot up and yeah I needed I needed to sit um, but other than that and both times I was able to sit back in the mobility scooter and I was fine I had a bottle of water in my little basket it was absolutely fine um, other than that I had a, a fantastic day I can't find the right words to describe how wonderful it was meeting Hayley from Ducky Darlings I have just like stalked poor Hayley for years and I love her yarn and to actually meet her it was a little bit of a fangirl moment but I think I was cool I think I was pretty cool I was chilled about it she might say differently I felt I was cool Dave hit it off with her husband they were talking about a sock knitting machine and motorbikes if we had found out at the beginning of the show that he could stand there and talk to Nick I think his name is I'd have just left him there he'd have been fine it was it was like a creche for husbands I could have left him there but yeah they had a nice chat um, meeting the ladies that I spend so many hours with every week it was really bizarre because I spend hours and hours with these people every week and have done for months and months so we know each other very well but we've never actually met we've never been in the same space and time together and every now and again there was kind of like a in my brain I can't really describe it but it was like this is weird no it's not it's perfectly normal it's no different from normal it's just there's not a square around everybody's faces but that was great I, I loved that brilliant meeting Kirsty and Tracy from Will and Wishes Brilliant meeting some people who watched the podcast, even though I was a little bit, oh no, please don't, please don't say nice things. Um, I just had the most amazing day ever, I think. Um, it was kind of our, today, as, as I mentioned, is our wedding anniversary, so it was kind of our wedding anniversary treat. And poor Dave got dragged around a yarn show and then had to sit and read his book while we all sat nattering and, and eating our lunch and knitting and yeah it was just brilliant and I'm very very grateful that I have the type of husband who will say right I'm going to hire you a mobility scooter and then just trail around carrying yarn all day I think I may keep him it's been 24 years so I think the receipt has run out I can't get him back under guarantee now anyway so yeah he probably got to stay whatever but yeah, so I've talked at you for nearly an hour. I am absolutely melting. I apologise if I'm like very shiny. I would put my little fan on. I got my little spaceman fan. He came from Timu, but he's quite loud. Um, so I won't put him on. Puppy's got in her bed and curled up and gone to sleep. She must be melting too. She's wearing a fur coat. But anyway, for those of you that missed her last time, you did at least get a glance of her as she got into bed. That is everything. I don't know if I'll record next week. I might just pop on for a short time with what I've got. Um, if not, I'll see you in a fortnight's time. 
I'm sorry it's sometimes a fortnight at the moment, but obviously, you know, I'm really not terribly well. Probably going to knock myself out this week doing stuff because I can. I've got the scooter for a week, so I'm just going to like make use of it. We're deciding whether or not it's worth getting one, you know, for good, buying one. Um, really, it kind of depends what the cardiologist says. So, yes, I'm going to go now. I have completely trashed... I've trashed the space that is in my craft room. There's just so much stuff in here at the moment because I'm dying up advents and mystery boxes and all the stuff is in here. And there appears to be quite a lot of projects on the go as well. I don't know how that happened. Actually, I went through my jar. You know my jar? I'm, I'm rambling now. This is like... You could call this the confetti section, where Mandy just, like, shoots off at many tangents. Um, I sorted out my project note jar, um, and I am down to 14 active projects. I'm not counting blankets and socks, which is down from 27, so I think that's okay. I have frogged some things, and I have finished eight pairs of socks which were in the jar I'm not putting socks in the jar now because I'm just having one or two pairs on the needles at a time so I'm not putting them in the jar I wonder if my hat's in there thinking about it yes it is I remember writing the piece of paper I'm talking to myself now so I'm gonna go because I'm very very hot and I think possibly I need to have a drink and you probably need to have a drink because I've just been like blah, 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 at you for 50 minutes now. So I'm going to go. I'm actually going to go this time. I'm doing my Canadian goodbye again, apparently. And I will possibly see you next week, but more likely the following week. So until I do see you, enjoy the weather if hot weather is your thing. And if you've got it, in fact, because I don't suppose the whole country has. Um, And... I'll see you when I see you. That's the easiest, isn't it? Bye. Happy knitting. <laughs>